We've been talking about adjusting journal entries. And one of the things that I'd like to revisit is the anatomy of the various accounts that we have impacted by those adjusting entries. So if anybody ever asked you, well, how much cash ha happened during that period for that account, you can answer the question. So for example, we know that unearned revenue is a liability account. And liability accounts are increased by credits and decreased by debits. So if I was to look at all the stuff that happened in the unearned revenue account during the period, I would notice that it would have a credit beginning balance, a credit ending balance. I would also notice that whenever I received money, it would show up as a credit here because this is all the cash I received from folks that gave me the money before I did a thing for them. Then, because we had an adjusting journal entry at the end of the period, we would have debited unearned revenue for the amount of services we have earned or provided from that cash. So this ending balance is the cash I still have for the promises I have not yet fulfilled, isn't it? So, if somebody said to you, well, how much cash was generated from unearned revenue, you would know to go to the credit side and total up all those credits to find out how much cash was involved. If somebody said to you, well, how much did you earn this period, I would know to go to the debit side to answer that question. Prepaid rent is another one that you'll see in an adjusting journal entry. That's an asset account, isn't it? So we know assets are increased by debits, decreased by credits. So we know that this prepaid account will have a debit beginning balance and an ending balance. We know that prepaid, say, you've paid for your insurance or your rent before you've consumed it. So what we would find on the debit side for all those debits listed here in the T account was how much rent we paid before we used it. So that's how much cash went out to pay for your rent, isn't it? But if you looked at the credit side of this asset account, we know we credited prepaid rent when we used or consumed it. So over here shows our consumption of rent during the period. So answering two questions, how much rent did you use, credit side, how much rent did you pay, debit side. Isn't that interesting? A couple more that you need to be aware of. We said that if we have notes payable, that interest accrues. Expense it now, pay it later. So we would expect to see an account called interest payable. A liability account, so credits increase, debits decrease. That adjusting entry that you make at the end of the period, expense your interest now, but pay it later, shows how much interest has uh, you you owe or have consumed over the period. If I look at the credit or the debit side, it would show you how much interest you paid. So how much cash went out for interest? Debit side of interest payable. Credit side, how much interest you consumed. Finally, salaries payable, another liability account that you'd see in those accruals. Since it's a liability, Credits increase, debits decrease. Expect to see a beginning and ending credit balance. Again, that adjusting entry is expense, the salaries and pay wages payable that you've used, credit salaries payable. So when I see salaries payable over here, this is how much usage or consumption I have of my employees during the period. Over on the debit side shows you how much you've paid your employees. In other words, how much cash went out to pay your employees. In other words, payday versus time, a time card turn-in. <laughs> so that's the differences here. So hopefully this anatomy will help you reflect on what you've learned this chapter about adjusting entries and closing entries.